We're going to start this video a little differently from the ones I've done before. What I've done is I have refurbished this Dymo disc painter and I will turn it over on the back so that you can see the serial number of it because this goes with a specific auction. These suffer from belt fatigue and deterioration. They also get uh, a lot of extra ink um, in the spillway that's used for the ink cleaning. But one of the things that's happened with these is you can no longer get the Dymo um, number 11 um, print cartridges, or if you can get them, and I did find some uh, overseas, they are so old that they have become unpredictable. Sometimes they work, sometimes they don't. Sometimes they print two colors, maybe one color, uh, some mixed together. And at this point, I've just stopped using them completely. I found a drop-in replacement from Lexmark. Lexmark, and I'll show you another container of that in just a moment. Lexmark had produced a uh, another one of these, just they called it number one, and it fits perfectly if you modify the printer to handle the print cartridge because there's an additional tab that makes it hard to push down. That has been done on this particular printer. So I'm going to do a test print. That's going to be the next uh, video that I'm going to merge together with this one when I put this up on YouTube. Uh, so what I'm going to do is put this, uh, this is the Alexmark cartridge. It happened to have been opened um, July of 2020. This particular um, printer or this particular cartridge wasn't printing blue until I uh, submerged the print head in water um, for about two hours, then I gently clean that off and it's been printing perfectly ever since. Uh, so you can get these. These are still being made for the Lexmark printers, but the Dymo has to be modified to accept the cartridge. So we're going to put the cartridge in. Now I have the Discus Dymo software that comes with the printer on Windows 10. I don't support the software, so if the software doesn't work for you, that's not something I'm going to try to repair or take care of. Now the printer has just uh, accepted that print cartridge. I have a green indicator and I have the print cartridge indicator that isn't showing anything. Basically, it's it doesn't have a problem with the cartridge. It's happy with the cartridge. The next step is I will start a print on a fresh CD so that you can see it print. When it's done, I'm not going to splice anything together. I'm just going to pick this printer up and turn it over so you can see the serial number on the back because that's going to match the, uh, the eBay ad. And I'm doing that because I want you to know that the printer that you're buying is actually the printer that printed. So you know you're getting a good printer. If you see printers out on eBay for you know, crazy prices, five, six hundred dollars. Don't spend that kind of money on those because they'll only need to be repaired anyway. At this point in time, those those belts are no longer any good. And unless somebody else is doing the refurbishing as I am, you're just not going to have a, a usable printer. You'll spend that kind of money and then you'd need to send it to somebody like me to fix it for you. So this works. I want you to see it. It'll be in the next uh, next video that I'm going to splice in. Now this is a screen on the computer. Yes, I could have done a screenshot, but this is the actual screen on the computer that I have using the Discus uh, Dymo software, Discus for Dymo. And I'm doing this so you can actually see the, the printer in question is the Disc Painter. Uh, I have, it's copy four, I have four of these. And, uh, and what I've done with the settings is really simple. I've set an outer di diameter just a little bit larger than the CD, inner diameter so that I have a very small spindle hole because you'll see the CD that I put in has a, a small hole. Print quality, I've set all the way to the best because when I print on a CD, I want it to look like a picture, but you don't have to do that. There's also the the normal quality. It, it won't be as good, but if all you're doing is printing text, the, the normal is fine. I'm going to make it best. 
Ink density matters. I'm using, um, since the CD I'm going to print on is matte, I'm just using the maximum for matte. When you use glossy CDs, and by the way, it, it looks wonderful on glossy CDs, I will go to glossy 7. If you have a cartridge that's older or is running out of ink, you can run it up to color 9, which is the maximum saturation. But if you do this, you're going to get about, I don't know, maybe they they advertised 100 per cartridge. If you get 50, I think you're lucky. But the cartridges, if you look at them on, on eBay and on Amazon, they're like less than, they're less than $20. You might find them less than 10. So I'm going to go ahead and fire this up and let it start printing. And then we'll go back to the printer. The printer is now waiting for a CD. And I keep saying CD, it could be DVD or Blu-ray, it really doesn't matter. You're printing on the white side of the, the CD. This is a matte um, CD or piece of media, just a regular CD. You can also put um, labels on them, and I'll, give, I'll show you what the label sheet looks like. You could get a, a sheet of labels that looks like this. These are glossy labels. You could also get a sheet of matte labels, which might be a little hard to see on, on this, but these are matte labels, and just put them on a regular CD, and as long as you do, it'll print perfectly fine on that. So you have some options there, but I'm using actual media. And when you're doing your tests, do your tests with spent media so that you can, you can run multiple tests on your spent media um, and put your blank um, labels on that. If you'll see, this is spent media that I've used. I just put a white label on, and that's so that when I'm doing basic testing as I'm refurbishing these, it'll work fine. But we're going to go ahead and get this started. Now it's going to take a while to print. This is, this is not, you know, a very fast process. So I'm going to let that do the work and then we'll come back and look at it after it's done.
Now that's the high quality, and you can you can see it took a while to complete. It runs uh, it runs about half that time uh, when you're doing a uh, uh, one of these on half on the um, lesser quality, but uh, you can see it's it's good. Now one thing you need to do is don't touch the face of it. Don't immediately try to burn it. This this ink is still a little wet. I'm going to set this aside and you can, you can see because the edge I got a little bit on my fingers. Now what I'm going to do is turn this over. I'm going to disconnect it and turn it over so that you can see the serial number for this particular printer. The serial number um, ends in nine three four four eight, um, but notice the beginning of it. So there's your 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 model number and then your serial number there. Um, sorry, here's your actual serial number, uh, and that serial number is the printer that you will be getting. And that, uh, that concludes this video. One, oh, one other thing I was going to tell you about before I forget. The Lexmark number one cartridge is readily available. And this is a printer that's been modified to work with that Lexmark. The old Dymo uh, 11s, you may find them. This will still work with the Dymo 11 even after it's been modified, but these cartridges, as I said, the cartridges that I purchased in bulk for resale ended up having so many problems I stopped selling them. So um, the good news is the ones that I sold seem to have been okay, but uh, again, I would stay away from these.